Axillary artery. The axillary artery begins as a continuation of the subclavian artery at the outer border of the first rib and ends at the lower border of the teres major, where it continues as the brachial artery. It is accompanied throughout its course by the axillary vein. It is enclosed in a facial sheath, the axillary sheath, which is derived from the prevertebral layer of the deep cervical fascia. It is split into three parts by the pectoralis minor muscle. Relations of the artery First part. Anteriorly, the artery is related to the pectoralis major and the loop of communication between the lateral and medial pectoral nerves. Posteriorly, it is related to the medial cord of the brachial plexus, long thoracic nerve, and first digitation of the serratus anterior muscle. Medially, the axillary vein, and laterally, the lateral and posterior cords of the brachial plexus. Second part is related anteriorly to the pectoralis minor, posteriorly to the posterior cord of the brachial plexus and the subscapularis, medially to the medial cord of the brachial plexus and axillary vein, and laterally to the lateral cord of the brachial plexus. The third part is related anteriorly to the medial root of the medial nerve, posteriorly to the radial nerve, axillary nerve, subscapularis in the upper part, teres major in the lower part, medially to the axillary vein, medial cutaneous nerve of the arm, and ulnar nerve, and laterally to the muscular cutaneous nerve. Branches of the axillary artery. Superior thoracic artery arises from the first part of the axillary artery. Thoracoacromial artery arises from the second part of the axillary artery and gives off four branches, pectoral, acromial, clavicular, and a deltoid branch. Lateral thoracic artery also arises from the second part and gives off several mammary branches. Subscapular artery arises from the third part of the axillary artery and gives rise to the circumflex scapular artery. Anterior and posterior circumflex humeral arteries also arise from the third part. Anastomosis around the scapula. This is a rich anastomosis situated around the scapula and is between branches of the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery. This anastomosis provides collateral circulation through which blood can flow to the upper limb when the distal part of the subclavian artery or the proximal part of the axillary artery is blocked. It takes place at two sites. Around the scapular body. Here, anastomosis occurs between the suprascapular artery, which is a branch of the subclavian artery, circumflex scapular artery, a branch of the third part of the axillary artery, and the deep branch of the transverse cervical artery. Over the acromion process. Here, anastomosis occurs between the acromial branch of the thoracoacromial artery, acromial branch of the suprascapular artery, and a chromial branch of the posterior circumflex humeral artery. Clinical correlation. If there is blockage anywhere between the first part of the subclavian artery and the third part of the axillary artery, the scapular anastomosis ensures adequate circulation to the upper limb.